Well, the election results are in, and Donald Trump has been declared the next president. And we've seen the S&P 500, as well as the overall stock market, shoot to all-time highs as a result of investor confidence. And the question you may now have is, will this continue? Should you pull back? In fact, I got this question right here saying, Bob, what should we do in this case? Should we just bask in the glory of the stock market at an all-time high, or should we just keep on investing? Because Warren Buffett, he says, be fearful when people are greedy. And right now it feels like greed has taken over ever since the announcement of Donald Trump as the next president. What a great question. And what we're going to do today in this video, we need to look back to 2016 when he got elected, but we also need to look at just overall what may or may not happen. So there's a lot of things on the table, and this is not a political channel. This is a personal finance channel. So we're going to stick to the facts and we're going to stick to personal finance only. And the, the big thing, though, there's a lot of promises when it comes down to personal income tax, corporate tax, tariffs, and so much more. And it could either be positive and be a great thing, or there could be headwinds, therefore making this all very challenging for the government and for the president to make those promises actually come true. As a result, the stock market is going to react, however it's going to react. So a couple of things could happen here. Um, the very first thing that people are very much focused on is the permanentization, if that's even a word, of the 2017 tax cuts. This is a big deal. Back in 2017, we had the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. Those and a lot of those were set to expire in 2025. Now, with Trump coming back into office, we can expect that to be permanent because he's going to set it to be permanent. Now, that impacts a lot because if you were around for that period of time and, and you took a look at your paycheck, you should have seen a reduction in your taxes and, and more money coming for your take-home pay. If you run a business, you probably saw a little bit of a bump on the positive end of take-home pay from that too. Reducing taxes, that's all great. It also increased significantly the standard deduction. So when you go to file your taxes, your standard deduction is much higher than it used to be prior to 2017. There's a big push on what would offset that. So when you do reduction of taxes, when you put on things that benefit, you know, on, on the surface, benefit a lot of middle income taxpayers, when you reduce the tax on overtime pay, like he is mentioning in his campaign promise, what is the offset to maintain revenue for the government? Because otherwise, what you're doing is you're running up the national deficit. Now, there's two ways you could do this. You find ways to increase revenue on another spectrum. Maybe that is the tariffs, like he's mentioning, or maybe that's some other way of increasing revenue. Or you find ways to cut cost. Cut government spending to reduce the national deficit. There has to be one trade-off to the other. You can't just have both going up because that, again, will run up the debt of the country. But what happens to our investment accounts? Because to the big question of should we keep on investing or are we in a massive greed territory because we're at an all-time high of the stock market, I think it'd be wise to take a trip back to 2016 and see what happens knowing that these headwinds of what could or could not happen in the future could make this all just a facade or make it uh, even better than what it is. Let's hop over to the screen and take a look. So I don't know about you, but when I opened my accounts after uh, you know this past uh, Wednesday and Thursday, I absolutely loved what I saw. If you feel the same, go ahead and drop a comment down below. How excited are you? How much money or percentage are you up as a result of your investment? That is obviously what the big buzz is right now. And can it continue? So here's where we are in the year 2016. Now, this is looking at VOO, Vanguard S&P 500, top 500 companies. This is the measure of the stock market. OK, so if we look here on this beautiful chart, we can see that, uh, you know, we're, we're right around. What is that? One ninety six per share back here on Halloween of 2016. And we kind of dropped down quite significantly here all the way down to 191 right before the election. And then look, we get this massive jump up to 199. It shoots up. In fact, if you look at this day to day, it's up 2%, 0.46, and then up 1.07%. So it does this, it jumps up. Not maybe as much as now, but it is still a good jump from what it was trending at just beforehand. You can kind of see it was flatlined and then we had a nice little pop. Now, here's the thing to think about. Will this in 2024, 2025, 2026 repeat what happened in 2016 as we come forward? So look at this at 199 and it shoots up. By the time we're here 
And, and it's still not 2017. This is still president-elect territory. We're now up to 206. We come forward here, and now, now we're in 2017, way over here, and the price is right around 208. It then kind of flatlines, pops up a little bit here in January, and it keeps running up all the way here to March, which is 221. So if you would have bought in, and you would have been a little bit aggressive in that earlier or later part, I should say, of 2016, by February of 2017, you're now up quite an amount of money, especially if you put a lot of money into the investment. So the trick happens of looking at the same lens. If we go back here to where this all happened, you may think, whoa, this just really ran up. Can it really run up more? Should I wait until the stock market comes back down before I put money in? And it's really tricky because we don't know what's on the other end. See, here we have the benefit of scrolling over here to the right. But right now, we're kind of stuck right here. We don't know what's after right now. Will it go up or will there be some headwinds? Will there be a recession? Will there be some, some things that cannot be controlled by any government and we just got to deal with it? Could we see negative earnings start coming out? putting pressure on the stock market because the companies cannot continue to just outperform the stock market, which means that they're not reporting earnings that match the valuation of the stock market. It's going to naturally pull down the stock market. So there's a lot of things that we don't see on the other end yet. We do here. So what we could assume is, could there be a potential that this continues to run up? And if so, if you wait for it to come back down, you might be missing out because if you say, well, it's 199 right now and I feel that this is going to come back down to, let's say, 180. I'm going to wait for 180 and I'm going to buy in. Well, you were out of luck, my friend, because if I scroll all the way from 2018, 2019 to March 2020 when we had the, the COVID pandemic that, that brought the stock market down, it, it only comes down here to 200. So what would have happened? There's your 199. So it basically reset itself. It never got to 180. So what would happen is you're sitting on cash that whole time and you're not taking advantage of the opportunity that really comes forward where it's coming up. And right, right here, look at this. It goes up to $311 a share. So by waiting and waiting, you're missing out on all these gains, all these dividends, all these things that happen in the stock market because you're waiting for the right time. So what could be happening here as we scroll forward and see a similar trend is potentially the same thing. As you see right here, we're at 2.49%, 0 0.78, and 0.44. Very, very similar looking to the 2016 map, is it not? Could we see the same type of thing happen? Now we're looking at 549. By the way, if you invested at 199 a share and you're right now at 549 on VOO, you're feeling really good right now. But this is where we as smart investors need to come up with a plan and stick to the plan, regardless of who the president is. It doesn't matter. What it needs to matter is, what does your outlook look like from an overall economic perspective? Now, because of Donald Trump's history in business, because of his promises to reduce taxes and really to fuel uh, a lot of American economic growth, there's a lot of confidence in the stock market. And if this continues to happen, where we're popping off, the next couple of years could see some beautiful, beautiful gains like we did from 2016 all the way up to March of 2020. Here's a study done by Charles Schwab. And I love this study because it looks at four, actually, sorry, five different people. Take a look here. So even bad market timing trumps inertia. So the, the really cool thing here is we're looking at $2,000 annually as a hypothetical portfolio that tracks the S&P 500 index from 2001 to 2020, and the individual who never bought stocks at all, look at that, all the way over there on the right, they don't have any money to show for it. But if the people that just do the dollar cost averaging or invest immediately when they get their money, look at how that works. Because we know on the left-hand side, even though we all want to be perfect with our timing, we are not psychics. I don't care who you are, you're just not. And, and you know, to, to time it perfectly every single time is going to be very difficult. But I think even the bad timing looks pretty good compared to just sitting on cash. Because by the time you think it's time to invest, it's already too late. And you are looking pretty weak. So what's your prediction? Is the stock market going to keep going up as a result of the Trump presidency? Or is there going to be headwinds and therefore the market will reverse this time around. Drop your thoughts down below. Check out this video next and we'll see you on the next video.